SOHIC must. The Students One Health Innovation Club, Barara University of Science and Technology, presents the power of their story. Ugandan folk in the wake of the novel COVID-19 pandemic. Warm greetings from Bara University of Science and Technology. Coronavirus disease 2019 started in China but is now a pandemic with millions of people infected and thousands killed. In order to mitigate the effects of this disease and several other pandemics, there is need for a multi-sectoral approach that utilizes knowledge and skills from different spheres of training. One such approach is the One Health. The Students One Health Innovation Club was officially launched on 19th October 2018 with over 200 students from the different faculties at Mbarara University of Science and Technology. We have greatly grown since then. We were founded on the One Health Principle, which is the collaborative effort of multiple disciplines working together locally, nationally, and globally to achieve optimal health for animals, humans, plants, and the entire ecosystem as they are intrinsically linked. As the global community is racing to slow down and eventually halt the spread of COVID-19, which has claimed over 500,000 lives and infected over 10 million people, the Students One Health Innovation Club deemed it fit to join this global fight. So he must organize a response against COVID-19 with two objectives. One, to raise awareness about accurate COVID-19 information and two, to support the implementation of the public health interventions as guided by the Uganda National Health Task Force and the World Health Organization. Once a national state of emergency was declared in Uganda, over 21 health students in Barara have volunteered in Barara General Referral Hospital to support the COVID-19 task force here. To flag off the SOHIC mass response, we organized an online webinar which trained several international students from Uganda, Kenya, India, and several other countries. We equally organized a needs assessment in three different areas, Rory Corner Market, Central Market, and Tasso Village, which is a student's hub to assess the gaps in knowledge, attitudes, perceptions about COVID-19. Following the assessment of the survey, the gaps found were used to influence and inform the community dissemination program, which took place in Rory Corner Market, Central Market, and Tasso Village. Here, we answered questions that the community had, raised posters about COVID-19 in both English and Runyankole. At the same time, we donated a no-touch hand washing system, which was an innovation of one of our own, Turiya Musime Rogers. And in this innovation, it has a pedal system which does not require users to touch the tap. This is all to support the implementation of public health measures. All this was picked with this documentary, The Power of Their Story. I was the first focal person for SHARE in this institution, and we are always very grateful to the overall leadership of, for SHARE and now after whom. When One Health was introduced to MAST, one of our main objectives was to see how this concept would be institutionalized. We held some trainings to make sure that people have an idea of what One Health is. The Students Health and Innovation Club has been able to do wonders. They've taken on this One Health concept with a lot of vigor. Everyone has got a contribution to this uh, monster of health. I am uh, Professor Celestino Obua. Professor Obua, how has the pandemic affected traditional methods of learning and the university as a whole? For the education sector, uh, you can be sure that um, most of our uh, academic institutions were not designed for social distancing. And yet, the effective tool to handle uh, COVID-19 is social distancing. Now, as such, you realize that uh, most of our education uh, system and environment was designed for close interaction. So it has affected the traditional methods of teaching. 
which relied on face-to-face -face interaction uh, with the lecturer and the students. And now many of the institutions have to adapt to uh, distance learning mechanisms, which is either purely online or a blended, where there is some level of uh, limited interaction. So over the years we've built Marine University as University without walls, University that interfaces real time with the challenges of the community. We've done this through uh, ensuring the students spend part of their time and they need the hard to reach underserved communities, most particularly in southwestern Uganda. When we first reported the first case in the country, our risk perception rose and it reached a climax somewhere. Everybody knew about COVID and how dangerous it is and everyone was alert, including the community. But with the time we have seen it calm down and because of that we see people behave differently. So Jacob, what motivated you to volunteer at the hospital during this novel global pandemic? Before Uganda declared a state of emergency, we were reading about COVID from other countries. We saw in some countries final year medical students being called into action because they are medical systems and facilities were overwhelmed by the numbers of the sick people. There's no point of me going home to protect myself, yet this is the kind of line I chose. It's the kind of life I'm going to lead for the rest of my years, so there's no way I could look back. Nargaha <laughs> The pandemic came in such a way that it limited access in terms of reaching out to those who are in need. One of the things that uh, could have affected health access at the same time is that there was limited ability to build evidence from the research perspective. Mm. So that one affects you to how much can you influence? It's widely known that animals interact with humans at close range or at a distant range. Uh, but in this uh, situation of COVID-19, uh, many, many research questions, or many questions has remained unanswered about what could be the origin. I'm glad you're recording this. It should be seen and watched by many. COVID is real and it kills. It has killed people globally. It has started killing Ugandans. Do not wait to be the next victim. My name is Dr. Grace Chitwanzi Muliowa. I'm a dermatologist working with Imbara University where I've been working with my departed colleague, Dr. Peter Magisha Sebishimbo a very young man who was just aged 38 years old when he died just recently, 7th of September this very month, due to this COVID pandemic disease which we have. Of course, it is so sad we lost a colleague. As a fraternity of dermatologists in Uganda, we are not so many, we don't exceed 25 who serve a population of 40 million Ugandans, can imagine, we lost a very young and energetic, dedicated man. We should not let the death of our colleague just go in vain. May Peter so.